Cheers and welcome my friends. I'm Holotrak and this is going to be a short video about all the new paid features in the new Oroponio Salus 4 DLC Cradle of Civilization. Paradox has been so kind and has given me a press code free of charge so that I can make some videos and I thought the first video should be a video that shows you all the features that you're going to get if you do buy the DLC. I'm going to make a separate video for all the free features that you get with the accompanying uh, 1.23 Persia patch. Um, the DLC is going to be out on November the 16th uh, for 19.99 euro, dollar or your local equivalent. And uh, now let's just get right to the features. All right, so first paid feature is something very nice, gives your army something to do during peacetime, and that is having your soldiers um, hold drills. Now, to drill, an army needs a leader, be it a normal ruler or be it a general, and then once they start that, your soldiers basically become better fighters because of all the drills they're doing. Um, this gives them the... This fills up their drill bar, their drill meter, and at 100, they're going to do 10% more fire damage, shock damage, and they're going to take 10% less fire and shock damage. So they definitely become a lot better if they are drilled fully up. Um, once you stop the drilling, um, that will decay again by 0.20. Or if they take losses, they have to fill the ranks with undrilled men and that's also going to reduce their drill level. While they are drilling, they cost full maintenance, but their um, morale is capped at 0.5, just like um, if they were on the lowest level of maintenance possible. Um, generals and rulers also have a chance of getting a skill increase when they do drilling. Uh, it also does increase your army professionalism. We're going to get to that in a little bit. And uh, if you have this thing activated, automatically raise fort maintenance during war, then if the uh, if you get into a war, if you declare one or if you get declared on, then any drilling armies will also stop drilling. The other paid feature to do with armies is army professionalism. You can see that we have a bar over here, it's in the military tab. And it basically shows our reliance on mercenaries versus our reliance on a professional army of our own. It uh, varies between 0 points and 100. Um, at 0, we have reduced cost for mercenaries and more available mercenaries, whereas on the top, our troops will have 20% siege ability, 10% more land fire damage, 10% more shock damage, which is actually quite nice, very potent. And then at every 20%, um, professionalism we gain a new ability at 20% we can build supply depots investing military points to increase the supply limit in a certain province for two years at 40% we can refill a garrison out of our troops in a certain province so we have to click on this and then the garrison receives new men so that we can move on conquer further um, at 60% Whenever we disband our regiments, um, the manpower goes back into our manpower pool, which is actually quite nice. At 80%, our generals cost 50% less. Very good. And at 100%, we have less morale damage taken by reserve. So units that are in a fight but are not currently fighting uh, will sort of move into the breach fresh then. And our armies gain the drill level faster, doubled uh, by 100%. Um, so that's that's really good, making them make it making it easier to train up troops. Now, how do you get that? Um, well, by recruiting generals. Every recruited general gives you 1%. If you drill armies, that gives you a certain amount of professionalism um, every re year, depending on how many regiments of your force limit are training currently all our army is training but we still only gain 0.7 percent per year because we could have uh, uh, 38 regiments but we only have 28 and then last but not least if you slack in your recruiting standards you can gain two years worth of manpower gain by sacrificing uh, five of your army professionalism and uh, the other way that you can lose army professionalism is by recruiting mercenaries each recruited mercenary unit reduces your professionalism by 0.15 percent cradle of civilization introduces trade policies as a paid feature um, you have this as your default maximize profit which is going to increase your power in that trade node by five percent you can go for hostile trading, increasing um, the time that you can build your spy network in any country that is active in that node. You can go for improve inland routes if you have more than 50% power. Um, 
in that in that route which allows you to increase your siege ability and increase the bonus um for your artillery against forts in the area very potent um you can go for established communities which allows you to improve your relations faster with people that are trading in that route uh, in that node and then for muslim countries they can also spread their faith if they have more than 50 percent power there they can propagate their own religion um by using their their trade power patch 1.23 changes piety so that it's no longer having a lot of piety or having um only little piety but instead it's a spectrum between mysticism on the one hand and legalism on the other hand um, that is free for everyone but if you have the dlc you'll be able to sacrifice some of your piety if you are very far towards mysticism above 75 then you can gain two years of manpower if and that will move you back towards legalism or if you're very far towards legalism you can use your piety to gain some uh some corruption reduction a new feature for Muslims are Muslim schools. Every country follows one or another Muslim school and these schools are in relationship to each other depending on um, what the countries that they belong to do. So if you have a prolonged war with a country that follows another school, the school may grow to hate you. On the other hand, um, you can also invite schools uh, or scholars of a befriended country. I have... Um, a school over here and I have very good relations with my ally Galan. So now I can actually invite this guy from Galan for 50 admin power and that is going to give me their bonus too. Like you can see that uh, my guys do shock damage and uh, these guys do less shock damage received and now I have that bonus as well from them um, for the next 20 years which is quite nice. So as part of the free patch, certain countries, like for example Ardabil in the Persian region, gain a new sort of development, which is the feudal theocracy, a monarchy with a very, very high um, focus on religion. And uh, everyone gets that as part of the free patch uh, with the bonuses, but the interactions are part of the DLC. You can either sanction holy war, gain claims on heathens and... Uh, heretics or you can invite minorities abroad um, into your capital area i don't currently control all my capital area which is why this is grayed out but otherwise it gives you one development and reduces local development cost and you can try to seize clerical holdings reducing your construction cost for five years um, so every five years you can use one of these options if you have the dlc and play as a feudal theocracy which is available to some persian states and some persian states can also adopt that one Another paid feature for all the countries that follow the Ottoman government, which is either the Ottomans themselves or some of the Anatolian um, Turk states that have managed to conquer all of the Ottomans are Pashas and Janissaries. So Pasha, if you assign one, then that reduces unrest and reduces the state maintenance, but it becomes more expensive to construct stuff and to recruit regiments. If, they, if you have Christian... Um, Christian states, then you can conscript Janissaries every five years over there, depending on the amount of uh, uh, heathen development in those areas. So we have a lot of Christians in here, so we can take two Janissaries um, over here for some military cost, and the Janissaries have their usual benefits, so they take less damage from fire and shock. They drill much faster, but they have double the reinforced cost. As a paid feature of the DLC, you will be able to interact in a specific way with the governments that the patch adds to Karakoyunlu and Akayunlu, um, the tribal federation. Whenever you win battles or humiliate your rivals, um, you gain more tribal allegiance, showing you um, rising in the esteem of your um, fellow tribes people. And you can spend that to either enlist a general with 40 tradition, increase your cavalry combat ability by 15%, or gain some cavalry for 0% of the cost and 25% of the regular build time. Patch 1.23 gives the Mamluks their own unique government with lots of nice bonuses centered around all the different cultures in the Mamluk Empire. This is free for everyone, um, giving the monarch plus two administrative skill, um, making it easier to promote cultures and all that kind of stuff. What you get if you have the DLC is you can actually, one, influence the succession. So on every monarch death, you get a new sultan automatically, and you can decide which culture that monarch should have. So if you go for Circassian, 
which they traditionally did. Um, then you're going to have a ruler with a strong claim and also going to gain some army tradition, which is pretty nice. Um, but if you take one of the other cultures in your empire, then you can use these unique interactions that you can only use with the DLC, where you can either promote um, the culture of your current ruler. Currently, our ruler is Circassian, so um, that actually limits his options. We can still go for promote Circassian in government, which reduces all power costs. Um, but selling off Circassian slaves is not possible because we don't have any Circassian provinces. And we can also not recruit anyone from Circassian lands because we have no Circassian provinces again. So um, choosing someone from a different culture is actually useful if you want to use those interactions. Um, they do fill with a base of three and then get added the the skill in the various areas of your current ruler. So it's a bit of a trade-off if you want to have someone with a strong claim or someone who can use these interactions frequently. Another real nice feature in the DLC is that you can now send missionaries to your vassal provinces and help them convert provinces to their state religion. Note their state religion. So if you're Sunni or Christian and you have an animist vassal, then uh, you're going to help them convert those provinces to animus if that's their state religion. But uh, I do have a vassal over here as the Mamluks, these guys, and they're Sunni just like I am. They do have a Shia province though, so um, I can actually convert these guys either via the production interface. That's going to show me that as a possible goal for conversion. Or I can just uh, click into the um, province directly, go here to send missionary. It's going to tell me what kind of religion um, these people are going to have once it's done. And it's going to take all my um, missionary strength. And that's actually quite nice if you want to help your vassal um, become more stable or if you want to prepare a vassal for integration. Another real nice addition for the Cradle of Civilization DLC owners is that you can now have armies conform to your army templates. Um, if you have created templates um, over here in the production interface, which by the way is no longer only a feature of the Art of War DLC, you need to have that one, but apparently it's also included in the Cradle of Civilizations so that, that you can use this feature. Um, I created this army template conform to this puny humans, which specifies that it needs 10 infantry and 5 cavalry. Um, uh, if I select that army over here, um, then I click on this button, conform to template, select the template that I want them to conform to, and then it will automatically split off all the units that don't belong. Um, if they have like 15 units of infantry, they're going to split off five. If they have any cannons and it's not specified that cannons should be in there, they're going to be split off and, or, and so forth. Um, and if they need any more units, they're going to build them. So click on it and these guys are going to conform, building their new units. And I can do that with all my army, saving me a ton of micromanagement. I'm really happy about this change. Patch 1.23 actually changes the government form of the Timurids. They're no longer a horde. Instead, they now follow the Icta government. And if you own the DLC, you get some special interactions for that government everyone else who follows them um, so you can either go for efficient tax farming which gives you some uh, national tax modifier and some ducats depending on the development of your subjects um, the timurids are rather rich uh, bunch of subjects in there so the more subjects you have the better this is going to get um, you can also go for manpower and core creation costs or you can go for lenient taxation um, increase your diplo rep and reduce the liberty design subjects all these last for 20 years and then you can choose a new one once you're um, out of the locked in um, thing that you've chosen before if you have more money than you know what to do with you can now promote your advisors if you own the dlc and you can promote them to a level of five instead of the usual three max level that you had um, before this they need to be um, part of an accepted culture like i can't promote this guy because he belongs to the afghan culture which is not accepted in our empire as the timurids so the button is grayed out but this guy over here i can promote him he's a level two right now um so 121 will promote him to level three um 272 will promote him to level four and 485 will promote this guy to level five which is also going to make him very expensive but uh, could potentially um, have us end up rolling in a lot of admin points so if you have lots and lots of money then uh, you can now um, gain quite a bit more um, paper mana than you used to 
So if you're in need of some uh, money or some manpower real quick, then in the new DLC you have the ability to exploit the development of a province. Basically living off um, the substance of your land by taking some away. You're going to gain 60 times the tax income um, if you take away um, admin development. You're going to gain 60 times the sailors of that province if you take away Diplo. And you gain 60 times the manpower of a province if you take away one point of um, manpower. Um, so if I do that over here, I'm going to gain 191. It's not much, but maybe it is something that you really need to do um, short term to actually survive. You can do that to every province above one um, base tax. And you can do that every 20 years. So I did that recently. So now until 1464, I cannot do that for bigger and richer provinces. This is actually something that um, could help you out of a out of a thing. This is only about ten ducats, but if we have uh, like a three base tax province, that's already twenty ducats. So the richer the province, the bigger the benefit of that, but also the more painful it will be to gain that development back. And a bit of a smaller feature: if you own the DLC, you can actually rename your generals and admirals. So after you recruit one. You can decide how they're going to be called. Same for admirals. Um, not the same for rulers because they already have a name and you can already determine those at some other point. And the final very small feature is that you can now um, choose to have compacted battle results instead of the full battle report. Um, this looks like this then um, shows your losses um, and shows the enemy losses and shows the war score impact. Just put uh, together a more, lot more compacted. Um, if you want to activate that, you go to video and then you scroll down all the way down and go here to compact the battle results and set that to yes. And with that, we're at the end of the new features in the Cradle of Civilization DLC that I know of. I hope this video helps you make the decision if you want to actually buy the DLC or not. If you found the video helpful in one form or another, then please leave a like so that the video can show up in search results. If you didn't find it helpful or if you have any other um, critique, commentary, anything like that, then please leave it in the comments so that I can improve. And if you want to see more videos like this or more European Masalis um, stuff, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Bye bye.